breathing is the process by which air moves in and out of our bodies. Inhaling provides us with a supply of oxygen, vital for our survival. Exhaling allows us to get rid of waste carbon dioxide. For all mammals, this important exchange of gases happens in the lungs. The lungs are in your chest. Air travels in through the nose or mouth, passes into a tube called the trachea and into the lungs. The lungs from a sheep are similar in size and structure to those from a human. They have a spongy texture and a smooth surface. The trachea or windpipe has rings of cartilage. These strengthen the trachea, making it hard to squash and helping to keep this important airway open. Cut through and you can see how thick the rings of white cartilage are. Before entering the lungs, the trachea branches into two smaller tubes called bronchi, which also have rings of cartilage. Pump air in through the trachea and both lungs inflate. But the lungs aren't hollow bags. The bubbles are caused by air from a network of tiny tubes within the lungs. Cut through the lungs and you can see they're spongy organs with a network of tubes running through them. To follow the journey that air makes from the nose and mouth, a medical camera can be inserted into the trachea. At the end of the trachea are the two bronchi. Each bronchi continues to divide into hundreds of much thinner tubes called bronchioles. Inject a lung with plastic and allow it to set. The shape produced by the plastic is the space normally occupied by air. The bronchioles extend into all parts of the lungs. Their structure is similar to the branches on a tree. Take a cross-section of a lung and you'll find the network of bronchioles. Each bronchiole ends in a bunch of tiny air sacs called alveoli. An alveolus is only about 0.2 millimetres in diameter. A complex network of capillaries covers each alveolus, carrying blood to and from the heart. The walls of the alveoli and the capillaries are extremely thin. Thin enough for oxygen to pass from the lung space into the blood by diffusion. And for carbon dioxide to pass from the blood into the lung space. Many millions of alveoli give the lungs a large surface area, approximately the size of a football pitch. The larger the surface area, the greater the rate of diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide. The inner surface of the lungs is exposed to everything we breathe in. So how does the body prevent illness and infection? The inner surface of the airways is moist with mucus. Microscopic hairs called cilia on the wall of the trachea sweep the mucus upwards and out. This prevents dust and bacteria trapped in the mucus from entering the lungs. The movement of air into and out of the lungs is called ventilation. It's caused by the movement of the ribs and diaphragm. The ribs make a cage around the chest cavity. The diaphragm is a flexible sheet of muscle at the bottom of the chest cavity. An X-ray shows ventilation of the lungs in green. The diaphragm at the bottom is black. In this model, balloons are the lungs. The rubber sheet is the diaphragm. As the diaphragm moves down, the chest volume increases, its pressure decreases and air is drawn into the lungs. As the diaphragm moves up, pressure increases and air is forced out of the lungs. Your heart beats more than 100,000 times a day. That's about 35 million times a year. 
The heart is a muscular pump in the chest next to the lungs. Its job is to move blood around your body. Imagine this heart is positioned inside the chest. The front of the heart is facing you. That means this side is the right-hand side, this is the left. Take a cross-section through the heart. You can see it's made up of four chambers. The right atrium, the right ventricle, the left ventricle and the left atrium. Blood takes a very specific route through the heart. Deoxygenated blood, shown in blue, is high in carbon dioxide and flows from the body into the right atrium. As the right atrium contracts, the blood flows through a valve into the right ventricle. Another contraction pumps the blood from the right ventricle through another valve into the pulmonary artery. This blood travels to the lungs, where it releases carbon dioxide and picks up oxygen. The oxygenated blood, shown in red, then returns to the heart. It enters the left atrium. The atrium contracts and blood is forced into the left ventricle. From here, it's pumped out of the heart into the main artery. This is called the aorta. The heart is made up of two pumps side by side. One pumps deoxygenated blood to the lungs, the other pumps oxygenated blood to the body. This heart is from a sheep. It's similar in size and shape to that of a human heart and is connected by blood vessels to the lungs. This side is the right-hand side. This is the left. The two atria are at the top. The atria are much smaller than the rest of the heart and have thin walls. This is the right atrium. This is the left. Blood flows into the right atrium through this vessel here. It's a vein called the vena cava and has a very thin wall. These tubes are the arteries that carry blood away from the heart to the lungs and body. Cutting through the right atrium and right ventricle reveals their internal structure. The atrium is much smaller. Its wall is less muscular than the ventricle. Blood travels from the atrium to the ventricle and out through the pulmonary artery. These tendinous cords hold three flaps of skin that form the one-way valve between the atrium and the ventricle. There's also a one-way outlet at the pulmonary artery. These flaps of skin form the valve that stops blood flowing in the wrong direction. Next, look at the left side. Again, the atrium is much smaller and the walls are thinner than the ventricle. Blood travels from the atrium to the ventricle and out through the aorta. Again, flaps of skin in the aorta stop blood flowing back into the heart. On this side, the tendinous cords holding the valve between the atrium and the ventricle are clearly visible. Both sides of the heart have a similar structure, but see how much thicker the walls of the left ventricle are compared to the right. Why do you think that might be? Blood vessels also have different thicknesses. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. Their walls are thick and muscular. Veins carry blood back to the heart. Their walls are thin and less muscular. To find out which blood vessel is more elastic, take a small section of an artery and a vein. Suspend each and attach a weight, steadily increasing the amount of mass. Which blood vessel is the more elastic and why? If you break a bone, the first thing the hospital does is to take an X-ray. The X-rays pass through the skin and muscle, but not through the bones.
The skeletal system of the human body is made up of just over 200 bones of varying shapes and sizes. This model skeleton is held together by metal pins. In reality, muscles and ligaments hold bones together. The skeleton is one of the most important parts of the body. Can you spot any similarities between these skeletons of other animals? A toad, a cat, a monkey and a bird. Their shapes are different depending on the animal's way of life and how it moves but their skeletons have common structures. They all have a spine. That's what makes them vertebrates. The spine is the central support for the body. An adult human spine is made up of 26 linked bones called vertebrae. Vertebrae support the body and protect the spinal nerve cord. This delicate cord runs through the middle of the spine. Other parts of the skeleton are also involved in protection. All these animals have skulls to protect the brain from injury. The ribcage protects the heart and lungs. The pelvis protects the reproductive organs. The skeleton plays a vital role in movement. Tough ligaments hold the ends of different bones together and allow the bones to move. Different joints allow bones to move in different ways. The joints in our fingers and elbows are hinged joints. They only bend in one plane. The joints in our hips and shoulders are called ball and socket joints. They allow circular movement. Other joints allow a smaller amount of movement, like the joints between vertebrae and the spine. These have elastic cartilage tissue between them, which allows the spine to bend from side to side and forward and backward. So all these skeletons have similar jobs to do. They support, protect and are involved in movement. Bones also play an important part in making blood cells. Saw a bone in half and you can see that it's not solid inside. This makes bones lightweight and easier to move. This bone also contains marrow. Marrow in certain bones produces both red and white blood cells. Bones have to be strong. They're hard because they contain calcium compounds. See what happens to this turkey leg bone when it's placed into a tank of dilute acid. A chemical reaction starts to happen. The acid slowly dissolves the calcium compounds away. 24 hours later, the bone is washed. And it's now soft and rubbery. Calcium compounds are vital for strong, healthy bones. Helping to keep this important airway open. Cut through and you can see how thick the rings of white cartilage are. Before entering the lungs, the trachea branches into two smaller tubes called bronchi, which also have rings of cartilage. Oxygen, vital for our survival. Exhaling allows us to get rid of waste carbon dioxide. For all mammals, this important exchange of gases happens in the lungs. The lungs are in your chest. Air travels in through the nose or mouth, passes into a tube called the trachea, into the lungs. The lungs
bones from a sheep are similar in size and structure to those from a human. They have a spongy texture and a smooth surface. The trachea or windpipe has rings of cartilage. These strengthen the trachea, making it hard to squash and have... Breathing is the process by which air moves in and out of our bodies. Inhaling provides us with a supply of oxygen.